Does your ex think that the world revolves around them? Do they maybe treat other people as disposable and seem to lack empathy? Well, then there's a good chance that your ex is a narcissist. Now, in this video, I'm gonna go over how to recognize a narcissist, what it's like to date one, and how you can get a second chance with your narcissistic ex, if you decide that's a good idea. So if you do suspect that your ex is a narcissist and you wanna win them back, then this is definitely the video for you. I, of course, am Breakup Brad Browning, author of The X Factor and Breakup Coach to thousands around the world for over 10 years now. If you'd like a little help with your breakup, getting over your, getting over your ex or getting them back, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and sign up for my coaching at breakupbrad.com slash coaching. Now, before we start, uh, I should say that I'm not a mental health professional and some of these indicators are subjective, so please don't start accusing your ex of being a narcissist just because they like looking at themselves in the mirror. The real test for a narcissist is how their actions and attitudes affect the people around them and how little they seem to care about those people. Now, the good thing here is that a breakup can really bring out these traits in people. So you really had a front row seat to some pretty intense narcissistic behavior. Now, let's jump into the six signs that your ex is indeed a narcissist. So sign number one is gaslighting. Does your ex you know, try to make you second guess reality? Do you ever feel the need or the desire to, to tape record your conversations just to prove to them that they said something that they're insisting that they didn't? Then you're experiencing gaslighting. Now gaslighting, of course, is a very popular term these days and it gets misapplied a lot, but actual gaslighting is very real and it's also very harmful. It's one of the, the most common tactics that narcissists use and the truth is they probably don't even know that they're doing it. See, narcissists are able to twist the truth in order to make you feel crazy and gain control over you. So for example, let me paint you a scenario. You're in a big fight with your ex. You know, they say, you're worthless. I'm the only one who'd ever put up with this. You're gonna die alone. And then a couple weeks later, you can't stop thinking about it, so you bring it up. And then they say, what? I never said that. Why would I ever say something like that? That's horrible. And now at this point, you know, you start to doubt yourself. They seem so sure. Did you misremember? Well, this is gaslighting at work. They call into question things that you know to be true, and it sends you into an emotional tailspin. And when you start to doubt your own sanity, then they win. And now you have to rely on them to tell you what's true and what isn't. And this kind of power is extremely attractive to a narcissist. Now, the second sign is grandiosity. See, narcissists insist on their own superiority over others. They've taken self-confidence to the extreme and they believe that they really are the center of the universe. They think that you know, they're the most special and unique person in the world and that it takes a very special person to understand their greatness. And this is why narcissists can be very flattering to the people around them. Since they're so amazing, then you must be amazing too since they want you around. And to this end, you know, they often exaggerate their own skills, achievements, and stories. Now, they'll often talk about how lucky you are to have them in, their, in your life, and their sense of self-worth can honestly border on manic. Sign number three of a narcissist is inability to take criticism. Obviously, no one loves criticism, but narcissists can't handle it even in its mildest form. They'll often lash out in anger and turn criticism around on you. They may be you know, dismissive or sarcastic because narcissists don't like it when someone questions their inflated view of themselves and so they need to find a way to minimize the criticism of others. Sign number four is just self-centeredness. So when you talk about yourself, you know, does your ex always change the topic somehow back to them? If they do, this is because to a narcissist, it's really difficult to feel true empathy or care about someone else besides themselves. And this will be reflected in all of their behavior, how they talk about other people, and just their general priorities. Remember that most people are selfish on a basic level, but true narcissists take it to a whole other level. And sign number five is double standards. Now this is a part of narcissists' inflated sense of self, and it comes with a, with a sense of entitlement as well. Basically, I'm so special that the rules don't apply to me. So they'll often you know, skip the line, cut corners, and do whatever it takes to get what they want without considering how this actually affects other people, like you. So maybe they yell at people in customer service, they speed excessively or drive drunk, and narcissists will often be very judgmental of others for doing the very same things that they do on a regular basis. And this hypocrisy comes from a lack of self-awareness. And speaking of lacking, sign number six of a narcissist is a lack of empathy. So narcissists are prone to, to abusive behavior because they have difficulty feeling empathy for others. Since they don't consider the feelings of other people, they don't really have any qualms about manipulating and degrading others for their own benefit. Now this can be malicious or simply oblivious, but one thing is for sure, narcissists treat others badly and when confronted, they exhibit a lack of guilt or a lack of shame. 
Obviously, you know, this can make breaking up with a narcissistic ex even more difficult and frustrating than normal. So don't think that you're going crazy if your ex was particularly cruel or heartless during and after your breakup. So those six things are just a few of the many signs of narcissism. Basically, it comes down to an inflated sense of self-importance, a failure to empathize with others, and a tendency towards manipulative behavior. But that does raise the question, if your ex is a narcissist, should you just move on? Is there hope of rebuilding the relationship? Well, first, like I said earlier, I would caution you against di diagnosing them yourself. Narcissism is really a spectrum. So that means basically we're all narcissists in our own way. And narcissism can, can come and go depending on what's going on in our lives. And often it'll fade as we become more mature and we learn more about other people. So really, being a narcissist isn't always permanent. But, and here's the important part, you're not going to be able to fix them. All you can do is set boundaries and manage your own reaction to your narcissist ex's behavior. So really, you have to decide if this is something that you can live with. Now, I'm not saying roll over and play dead. I'm actually going to give you some very tangible steps that you can take to protect yourself and get your own needs met while dealing with a narcissist. But to some extent, this is who they are. They're not just going to wake up one day and become, you know, a completely empathetic, selfless person. But since you're still watching this video, I get the sense that your ex probably has other positive qualities that make them worth spending time with. Really, you just have to decide if the good outweighs the bad. And if you do decide to give it another shot, here's what you need to consider while trying to get them back. And just to warn you now, this advice will involve some manipulation. My thought is, you know, if they can dish it out, then they should probably be able to take it as well. So the first tip is to avoid conflict. Now this is really important. You don't want to let a narcissistic ex bait you into conflict. They're better at it than you are and they'll use it to break you down and prove how much better off they are without you. So instead, you know, always keep things light and breezy. Now the time will come for more serious discussions about what the future holds, but for now you should really just focus on reconnecting, making them laugh, and spending time and flirting with them. And tip number two is to flatter them. Because narcissists, they really enjoy flattery because it confirms that they're the best person who's ever lived. Now don't just give it up to them for no reason. Use praise to reward your ex for positive steps towards reconciliation. You know, if they start showing signs that they do want you back, use praise to seal the deal or to entice them towards more intimacy. Now, this can be a tricky process because you don't want to overdo it and further inflate their ego either. If you do have questions about this or any of the advice that I've given in this video, leave a comment below or head over to breakupbrad.com coaching to get answers from me directly about your situation. As soon as you sign up, we can put together a plan to get your ex back as soon as possible, even if they're a narcissist. Again, go to breakupbrad.com coaching where you can learn more about working with me one-on-one -on -one and register today. Now let's move on to tip number three dealing with a narcissistic ex, and that is to set healthy boundaries. Now since your relationship is in flux, you know, you might be afraid to set boundaries with your ex in fear that they'll just run away. But in my opinion, setting boundaries is actually going to make them want you even more. And this is because narcissists think of themselves as extremely valuable. And if you show them that you're willing to put your own needs above their attention, then they're gonna think that you're valuable as well. Remember, it's really all about perception here. And obviously, if your relationship with your ex was toxic, which is totally possible if they are a narcissist, then setting boundaries like this is going to set you up for a more equitable arrangement when you do end up back together. This can include things like how much time and space they're allowed to occupy in, their, in your life, you know, what topics are off limits, and what they're allowed to say to you. Really, anything that bothered you in the past, you can set a firm boundary around. Now, I'm not going to lie to you here. You know, in some situations, a narcissist will see a boundary like this and decide that you're not worth the trouble. But unfortunately, this is still worth the risk. Remember that your relationship as it was was not only hurting you and your self-image, but it also fell apart or you wouldn't be here watching this video right now. So you need to create a new status quo if you're going to have more success this time around. And to do that, you'll need to take some risks like this. Ultimately, someone who is worth being with will be happier that these boundaries are in place because you know, even if it's not always obvious, they do actually want you to be happy. Now let's move on to tip number four, which is play hard to get. Narcissists are typically interested in social status. So with that in mind, you need to make yourself appear as valuable as possible. The best way to make this happen is to give your ex the sense that they might lose you if they don't act right. So don't be afraid to blow them off and even ignore them sometimes. Show them that you're not the doormat that you were in the initial relationship. Playing hard to get means not making them a priority. Now, I know this can be difficult because I'm sure you want their attention more than anything right now, but remember that you're playing the long game. Getting them back will be worth denying yourself their presence for just one afternoon. 
Now, I actually made a really good video a few months ago about the importance of not chasing your ex if you want them back, which I strongly recommend you watch right after this video is over. I'll link to that video in the pop-up here and uh, in the description below as well, so give that a watch next. But for now, let's move on to tip number five dealing with a narcissist, which is don't let them manipulate you. Now, this is obviously easier said than done, right? I know that, but now that you and your ex are not sharing the same space, you'll have a much better shot at avoiding their manipulation. And if you add in some boundaries, then this starts to become more doable. Remember that manipulation is something that your ex almost certainly does unconsciously. So if you can stay strong against it, eventually they'll see that they're not, you're not someone that they can treat this way. It may take a long time, but if you stay firm in this way, you'll be on the way to creating a healthier dynamic with your ex, which is really going to help you going forward. Tip number six is to hold out for the real thing. So the attention of a narcissist can feel like the, the sun on your face, but if you're not careful, they may be gone by nightfall. So don't let your ex use you for sex, validation, or love bombing, only to disappear when things start to get serious. Hold out for the real thing rather than letting them treat you this way. This means you know, managing your time together and making sure that the relationship moves forward intentionally rather than just according to their moods. Another good tip number seven is to post photos on social media. Now this one works for any ex really, but it goes double for a narcissistic ex. So use the power of social media to make them jealous and you're going to make them worry about losing you. So to that end, you know, post photos of you having fun with friends, ideally friends of the opposite sex. Show your ex the exciting life that you're leading without them and make them want to be a part of it. See, narcissists can be extremely possessive and afraid of abandonment. So if you show them that you're not the, that they're not the only thing that's going on in your life, the only thing that matters in your life, then they're going to want to compete for your attention and that's going to result in them spending more time with you. So these are just a few of the many techniques that I can offer you when it comes to dealing with a narcissistic ex. If you want more advice, more proven tips, head over to breakupbrad.com after this video is over and check out my full free video there. It's jam-packed with vital information and facts that are going to help you reconnect with your narcissistic ex. Again, you can watch that full video for free at breakupbrad.com. And that just about does it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you have any questions about your particular situation or anything that I've covered in the video, obviously, don't be afraid to leave a comment below. I read and respond to as many of your comments as possible, so don't be shy. Leave a comment. And while you're here, of course, like the video and subscribe to my channel as well. Uh, it's extremely helpful. It takes two seconds, and it's much appreciated. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you again in my next video.